Hello, friends on Patreon. How is everybody doing today? I'm so excited. I have a real treat for you. Uh, I'll be sharing a little bit about the Mexican composer Arturo Marquez. And he's very famous. I'll talk about him more in a moment, I promise. Um, but why Arturo Marquez? Well, recently I performed a piece by him with some of the other faculty members I work with here at the university. And I'll be sharing that performance and you'll get to learn more about the composer. So I hope you really enjoy it. Arturo Marquez was born in the Sonoran Desert in the colonial town of Alamos, Mexico in 1950. He was the first of nine children and his father played the violin and also played in the mariachi band. Arturo's father often played with a quartet, so his first musical lessons consisted of listening to the traditional music, the waltzes, and the polkas that they performed. His grandfather was also a Mexican folk musician in the northern states of Sonora and Chihuahua. Because of his father and his grandfather, Marquez was exposed to several different musical styles in his childhood. In his own words, describing his childhood, Marquez says, we had very few resources, although the essentials were never lacking. I have memories of a typical village childhood without electricity, with the smells of earth and wood. The Marquez family moved to Los Angeles, California in 1962, where Arturo began to study violin and several other instruments. So these other instruments included tuba, trombone, and piano. He also began to compose. Again, in his own words, Marquez says that my adolescence was spent listening to Javier Solis, Sounds of Mariachi, The Beatles, Doors, Carlos Santana, Chopin, and a variety of Colombian bands. So a huge variety of music. When he was 17, he returned to Sonora, and the following year he became the municipal band director of Navajoa. He directed the band for five years, and at the same time he was studying piano at the National Conservatory of Mexico. Later, he received a scholarship from the French government when he was studying there um, to study composition in Paris. And when he finished his studies in France, he got a Fulbright scholarship, which is a really prestigious scholarship, and he used it to study in the United States and to get his Master's of Fine Arts degree from the California Institute of the Arts. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of his musical style now, and in particular, the danson. Well, throughout his studies, at one point, Marquez began to realize that he was being pulled in the direction of the times, you know, toward avant-garde music and contemporary music. And he realized that this was really not the right path for him. So he began to think back to the sounds of his childhood, his dad's mariachi band music, and to when he himself was leading the Navajoa band. And he decided to create a type of music that would be understood by the people, which he viewed as the true recipients of the art, and not by the sophisticated intellectual elite of the day. In his own words again, he says, I'm not interested in making music for the future or for the generations to come. I have to reinvent my technique because the basis of my studies was in contemporary music. I had to get back to traditional harmony, counterpoint, and the way of the traditional orchestra. So when Marquez came back to Mexico in 1990, his colleagues introduced him to the world of ballroom dancing and they showed him the danzón. Danzones are based on the dance music of Cuba and the Veracruz region of Mexico which you can see here in this slide, where that is in Mexico. Again, in his own words, Marquez says, it can be said in some way that what I'm doing when I'm writing my danzones is simply continuing with a family tradition and obviously adding some contemporary and academic elements to it. In the past, he also has said about his music, my works are fused with Latin music, jazz, and contemporary music. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Danzón number five, which is the one that you're going to be hearing in a moment. Um, it's called Portales de Madrugada, and it was composed in 1997. The literal translation of the title is The Gates of Early Morning, and Marquez has described the piece in this way. 
he says, it's a small danzon, very close to the traditional form, that evokes the square and, of course, my beloved portals of Veracruz. And he says that these portals of Veracruz remind him of his native land, of Alamos, which is also a city with many portals. So here are some images of portals, um, basically these circular gates here. Um, and you see many of them gathered around squares, central squares, and little towns here. Um, and the reason he called it the gates of early morning is that he actually finished composing the piece in the early morning. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation about Arturo Marquez. Um, we're finishing up here with a couple of slides, just showing a couple of the places where he's worked and also the awards that he has received.
So really, until the early 1990s, when Marquez began to write the danzones, his music was largely unknown outside of Mexico. Um, and now, increasingly, his danzones are being used for ballet productions throughout the world. And in particular, danzón number two is extremely famous. So these days, Arturo Marquez is a popular composer among the Latin American public and he is widely recognized as one of the most important Mexican composers of his generation. Internationally, he is the most well-known of all Mexican composers.